Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Christy and thank you so much for clicking on this video. As a disclaimer, we're going to be talking about eating disorders. So if that's a topic that triggers you, definitely make sure you click away now. But if this is content that you enjoy, definitely make sure that you subscribe to my channel. It means a lot to me. And also follow me on Instagram at Christy's underscore date where I post random stuff about my life. But let's get into it. Close, but we're strangers. Feel like we're far for starters, I am drinking just some iced coffee. I filled this like probably halfway up with unsweetened iced coffee and then the rest is with unsweetened almond milk and I just put a little dash of like French vanilla creamer. But I figured this was kind of like, you know, a sit down chat and I just wanted a nice cool drink. It just seemed like one of those days, you know, a drink, a blanket and a candid conversation. So. As you could probably tell from the title of this video, we're going to be talking about some of the guidelines slash rules for the treatment center that I went to for 30 days for inpatient residential treatment for my eating disorder. I made another video about my experience in residential treatment and you can watch that here. This video is less about my experience and more about just going over some of the things that were expected and uh, required at my treatment center. And I know that all treatment centers are different, but this just happens to be the rules for the one that I went to. So I literally still have the copy of the unit guidelines from my treatment center. And as you can see, I think it was the tech or nurse or something highlighted apparently all the main points. So that was sweet. And I probably read this like the first night I was there. And I will say that I remember watching videos like this before I went to treatment just to see what I was getting myself into. And a lot of the videos that I watched seemed to be describing treatment centers that were a lot more strict than the treatment center that I went to. So I think that kind of the idea of the treatment center that I went to, it was less about creating a lot of like really strict rules. Like you're not allowed to cut your food up into super tiny pieces and more about just encouraging people to be more comfortable around food. So there weren't a lot of like really specific rules, but again, we'll get into this as I go through this list. So the first section is daily living on the unit. And basically it says patients are to be out for vitals by 6.30 a.m. and to be finished by 6.45 a.m. weekdays, 7 a.m. and to be finished by 7.15 a.m. on weekends. Yeah, I was getting up probably around six every morning morning and kind of getting ready for the day, washing my face, getting dressed. And then I would just go out to get my vitals checked. So it was blood pressure sitting, blood pressure standing. And then I think, well, we were taking our temperature just because I went when everything was bad with the virus. We had to get our temperature checked like two or three times a day. And we had to get our vitals checked morning and evening. Actually, did we get them checked in the evening? I think so. Anyway, so patients had to be out of their room by 6.45 on weekends, or sorry, weekdays and 7.15 on weekends. So I guess we could sleep in for like 30 minutes on weekends, which was nice. Patients need to be ready for the day's activities before leaving their room in the morning. As soon as we left for the morning, our rooms were locked and we were only allowed to go back into our rooms to use the bathroom. Before the virus, I was told that everyone used a communal bathroom. So everyone just used the same bathroom and no one really went back into their rooms at all during the day. But since they were trying to put precautions in place, we all used our own toilets in our own rooms. So we did go back into our rooms just to go to the bathroom. And obviously we were supervised by a tech or a nurse. And other than that, like our rooms were locked. So we couldn't just go back into the rooms to get things that we needed. It says, make sure you follow the dress code. I think the dress code was in the patient handbook, but essentially don't wear anything that's see-through. Don't wear anything with inappropriate graphics or text, fairly simple. It is the patient's responsibility to tidy up their personal space in the day room and fold their blankets no personal items are to be left on the floor. So basically just make sure that our day room area was clean. Basically the day room is where everyone stayed throughout the day and there were just like multiple couches kind of in a circle and we all had our own like couch or space on the couch. Everyone was given a blanket to use there and we just had to make sure it was folded and we didn't have stuff all over the place. Do not leave the unit without permission. <laughs> okay, so quick story time here. I never left the unit without permission, but I definitely tried on multiple occasions. I definitely stole certain certain tools to try to open my window, which interestingly enough, it's don't even bother trying. At least the unit that I went to, they had these really specific screws to like lock down the windows that you couldn't unscrew. Like they were one way screws. I tried sneaking out. I knew, I knew the code to get in and out of the facility. I was able to figure that out, but I was never able to actually leave much to my chagrin. I think me like conniving to get out was probably the only thing that kept me sane because I kept trying to think of new ways to get out, but it was, it was pretty strict. Like you had to be in the 
the presence of somebody like all the time. Probably if you go to treatment, like don't waste your effort on that because they know what they're doing. And the reality is if you're in treatment, like you probably need to be there. So to be fair, my time could have been spent on more productive <laughs> thoughts and things. Okay, the next section is bathroom. Bathroom breaks will be given just before and after groups and each hour during free time. Okay, so basically we were not allowed to go to the bathroom alone when the nurse or tech would let us into our room and into the bathroom, they literally stood right outside the door with like a foot inside the door. I have major pee anxiety. Like I cannot go to the bathroom if I know that someone can hear me. It was awful. I swear for the first day, like I did not go to the bathroom and I was so miserable. The first day that I got there, I was so miserable. I was crying. I like was so uncomfortable because I needed to go to the bathroom and I just couldn't go. And the techs were like trying to be nice about it and standing outside the door and, you know, being encouraging, but I, I genuinely could not go. I never became comfortable going to the bathroom there. But after the third day, literally I was so incredibly miserable. Like I would not drink a sip of water until evening and our, our rooms were opened up in the evening, probably around like, I don't know, seven maybe. I don't remember exactly, but they were opened up for a couple hours in the evening and I would not drink any water until like the evening and and then we were required to drink like three bottles a day. And so I literally, the second day, realizing that I wasn't able to go to the bathroom during the day, I drank my three bottles within like two hours and I just went to the bathroom in the evening. And then the next day they were like, you're not allowed to drink all of your water at night. You have to drink it throughout the day. And I was just like, uh, no, I cannot go to the bathroom. And I was actually so upset. I, I think it was the third day I actually signed that I was going to leave against medical advice. I was like, heck no. I I am not, I cannot stay here. I cannot go to the bathroom. I, I was so miserable. The director like pulled me aside with my counselor and they're like, so why did you decide to leave? And I'm like, because I cannot freaking go to the bathroom. And they allowed me to basically, rather than have the nurse or tech stand right outside my bathroom door, they had to stand right outside my bedroom door. So the bedroom door was still open and my bathroom door was still open, but like they weren't right there, which it still took a long time to get used to. And there were still times that I would sit down to go to the bathroom and I just genuinely could not go. Like I just couldn't pee, but it did help. So basically one of the guidelines is just make sure that you go when the bathroom breaks are offered and you won't really be allowed to go at random times unless there is some type of an emergency. But the techs and nurses did a pretty good job about making sure that we could go to the bathroom every hour or two. So it wasn't like that big of a deal. Oh, and the techs and nurses had to check the contents. So basically like you weren't allowed to flush until the nurse or tech came in and made sure that you hadn't done anything you weren't supposed to do. Okay, next section is meals. Let me have a sip. <clears throat> Everyone must start meals and snacks together. Negative food discussion or controversial topics like race, sex, religion, politics, etc., at the table are discouraged. This makes sense. Obviously eating was a major struggle and it was just the idea to keep conversation as lighthearted and not focused on food or stressful topics as possible. Reading, knitting, drawing, writing, etc., during meals is not permissible unless specified by clinical staff. Appropriate condiments and seasonings may be used at the table per dietary discretion. One salt packet and two pepper packets are allowed per meal. Truvia slash sugar is not to be put on food. Everyone must stay seated while eating. No one is permitted to leave the table until the entire group is finished. I'm gonna skip some of these that are not as interesting. Okay, breakfast and lunch are scheduled to be finished in 30 minutes. Dinner is to be completed within 45 minutes and snacks are to be finished in 15 minutes. So basically the meals were timed and if you didn't finish all your food in the specific amount of time, then it was marked as incomplete. We had to show the text, the contents of our plates basically after we were done with a meal and we had to open up all our packaging and napkins to basically show that we hadn't hidden any food and we weren't allowed to wear jackets to the table and patients are expected to complete 95 to 100% of the meal. If a patient consumes only 75 to 95%, the tech will offer patient one boost, which is basically just a like supplemental drink, I guess. If patient consumes less than 75%, tech will offer patient two boosts supplements. Okay. <sighs> Man, I was very uncooperative my first week there. I After like my first week, I did actually get into the routine and did what I was supposed to do. But I swear that first week, I don't know, I was offered something like 28 boosts and I refused every single one of them. Like I was just, I was not a good patient. But after that, I was like, you know what? You need, you're here. You need to do the best you can to recover and like actually get as much as you can out of the programming. And I honestly think after the first week, I may have only been offered a boost like a few times. 
and I, I don't remember. I probably took it. I probably drank what I was supposed to after that. But yeah, the first week it was, it was not good. Okay, and then also rooms were locked about an hour after meals and I think like 30 minutes after a snack. So essentially if we ate, it's not like we could just go to the bathroom or do something in our rooms afterwards. And after the evening snack at eight, I think our rooms were locked for like 30 minutes after that. And then we were allowed back in. All right, beverages. One cup of coffee or tea is permitted in the morning following vital signs. So basically the only way we could get coffee or tea is if we drank all the water that we needed to drink the day before. Cause we had to finish like three bottles and if for some reason we didn't finish them, I think was it three or five? I don't remember. We had a certain number of bottles that we had to drink every day. And if we didn't finish them, then you would like lose coffee privileges. And then there were other things that would make it so you'd lose coffee privileges. Like if you were late to vitals, things like that. Beverages are not to be reheated. One cup of caffeine free tea will be served with the evening snack. Up to two Truvia packets and two creamers are allowed with the morning and evening beverages. Patients are not to drink coffee, tea, or any other beverage beverages beverages provided at AA slash NA meetings. This didn't apply to me because I never went to any of these meetings. If drinks or something were provided there, the patients weren't allowed to eat them. At least the ED patients weren't. And that's another interesting thing. My treatment center that I went to was divided in half. And so my half that I stayed at obviously was the eating disorder side. And then the other side was I think for recovery from drugs and alcohol. There were like a couple times that we did things together. Like one time the staff put up a screen in the yard and we watched a movie and it was our side of the treatment center and then their side. And so we kind of all came together and watched this movie. Okay. Food. Um, the next section is food. No food in patients rooms. No food or candy is to be brought into patients by family members, friends, or outside persons. All right, no food in rooms. <laughs> Again, I was not the best patient. I definitely did steal some food and like hide it in my room, which I eventually did fess up to, I'm pretty sure. Like right before I left, I'm pretty sure I told my counselor. But yeah, I did have food in my room that I stole from the kitchen. I don't know how I did it because the kitchen was like always locked and you weren't allowed to be in there without a supervisor. But somehow I did manage to sneak food. Uh, but don't do that. Like, I think for me, it just, I, there was so much fear for me around food and like fear that I wasn't gonna get enough. Just so much fear. And I felt like it was a safety thing for me to have food in my room, but I, I did fess up to it. I'm sure I talked about it with my counselor and we kind of worked through that, but. Anyways, technically we're not supposed to have any food in your rooms. And then obviously nobody, like your family or friends couldn't bring food from the outside. This didn't really apply when I was there just because of like the virus and the situation going on in the world. We actually did not have any visitors and a lot of the outings that we were supposed to be having were canceled. So we really didn't have anybody coming in from the outside and we very rarely actually went outside and did anything. Okay, there are a couple points about the nurses station. This is not very interesting. So I'm gonna skip that. Room guidelines no socializing or visiting other rooms. I didn't think that was a problem. We hung out literally with everyone all the time in the main room. Patients are to keep their rooms tidy, making bed daily and storing personal items appropriately. Rooms are subject to random surges. Okay, telephone and computer. Interestingly enough, I was actually the first patient that this treatment center accepted after it had essentially shut down because of the virus. So I don't know how many months it went without accepting new patients. And I was the first person that they accepted after kind of the shutdown. So when I I went there, there were only two girls there. And over the next week or two, a bunch more came because I was the first. And because it was during this weird time, I was able to get my phone in the evening, like right away. And so because there weren't any visitations allowed and we weren't able to go out and have outings, we were allowed to have our phone for like, maybe it was a couple hours in the evenings and for like a, a number of hours during the weekend, which to my knowledge was not typically allowed. That was a very specific thing because everything else was kind of not normal. And normally, the rule was like, you're not really allowed to have your phone for the first three days in treatment, which I think is a really stupid rule because I feel like the first three days someone's in treatment is when they need support from friends and family the most. But interestingly enough, because I was the first person since everything had shut down and because the admissions person actually told me that I was allowed to have my phone when we were going through this process, she's like, oh yeah, because of the virus, like everyone's allowed to have their phone. And she told me I could have it from day one. They let me have mine on day one, but all the other patients after me had to wait three days. And so I felt kind of bad about that. It obviously wasn't my fault, but technically the first day a new patient got there, they weren't allowed to use their phone at all. And like the second and third day, they had like 15 minutes or something. And then after that, they were able to use their phone like everyone else. 
again, I think that's really dumb because like the first three days I was in major distress. Like I was just so miserable. I just needed to talk to someone that I cared about. And anyways, there was also a computer at the facility that could be used by anyone if they had like permission from their counselor. And I finally, a few weeks into my stay was able to get permission to do some kind of work related things. And it just was able to help me keep my mind busy, which was really nice. All right, visitation. Obviously this did not apply to me, so I'm not even gonna read it and every, every facility is different, but we didn't have any visitation whatsoever. Outings, no outings during the patient's first five days on the unit unless cleared by the doctor. No bags or purses on outings. Patients could bring cash, debit, credit card, and ID only, and they had to stay with a staff member at all times. So we definitely went out to different parks. Outings were actually really hard for me just because we'd go to these parks and I was so tired of sitting all day, every single day that I would walk around and I was constantly getting like told to just be still still and to sit down and to stop moving. I mean, that was just hard, but like I understand why they did that. We would go to places where I used to go as a college student and go for runs and they would take us in onto these trails and just make us sit on the ground. I'm like, you cannot do this to me. Anyways, I, I realize that's not their fault. Like I know why they're doing that, but outings happen to be really challenging for me. And I definitely like all the time would get called out for like walking around when I should have just been being still or walking too fast when I needed to be walking slower, things like that. Smoking, so smoking was allowed for people that smoked. I think they could have like five smoke breaks a day. I don't know, I, I don't smoke. So that never applied to me. Mail is to be opened in front of staff outgoing mail is to be given to a tech. So basically they just want to make sure that no one's sneaking stuff into you. There were times that I got mail and I just had to like basically show the staff member. Movies, music, television, movies and TV are permitted during scheduled times. So we were allowed to watch like TV in the evenings and during the weekends at times. Just be mindful of volume, blah, 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 blah. Hobbies, hobbies and crafts are to take place during scheduled or personal time in the evening. Again, never really applied to me. I feel like I'm not a terribly creative person. I mean, I can be like, I'm creative when it comes to writing and things like that. But usually in my free time, I just read or in the evenings when I was able to have my phone, I talked to people or I just did random stuff on my phone. Other, okay, so this is the last section. Physical violence towards staff, patients or property will not be tolerated. Makes sense to me. Common courtesy and respect towards staff and peers is expected. Patients are required to attend in-house 12 step meetings for their path of recovery, such as EDA, AA and NA. So we did have eating disorder anonymous EDA meetings, I think probably a couple times a week. And that was usually led by one of the other patients, one of the other residents. Any requests or possible solutions should be brought to community meetings. That's basically when the entire community got together, all the staff, all the patients. Each patient is to be reading an eight keys book or another recovery book approved by the counselor. So basically when we got to the treatment center, we were just given books to read. And one of those happened to be like the eight keys to recovery. And that about sums it up, folks. Those are the guidelines. I mean, honestly, most of these seem pretty reasonable. And from what I've heard, other like heard of other treatment facilities mine happened to be I think a bit less strict than most again I don't I don't have anything to compare it to personally but that's just kind of the feel that I got from other things that I've heard I hope this was helpful and if you happen to find yourself in a position that you're needing to go to any type of treatment facility just yeah I'm, I'm sorry like I'm sorry you're in that situation because it really really sucks know that you have people rooting for you and try to follow the rules better than I did because I know all of them are there for like really specific reasons and it just took me a little bit of time to adjust and kind of accept them but just know that wherever you are in your journey I'm rooting for you and I wish you all the best but thank you so much for making it to the end of this video I really really appreciate it make sure you're subscribed to my channel if you aren't already and follow me on Instagram at Chrissy's underscore day and I will see you in the next video